By the end of 1912, the national movement for women's suffrage had hit a wall. The House of Representatives refused to even debate the issue, and incoming president Woodrow Wilson had declared it a local issue for each state to settle. So radical suffragist Alice Paul came up with, well, a radical idea. Paul pushed the National American Woman Suffrage Association to hold the giant parade in Washington, D.C. on March 3, 1913, just one day before Wilson's inauguration. She wanted a headline-grabbing spectacle in front of a captive audience, the hundreds of thousands of mostly male onlookers who had arrived for Wilson's ceremony the following day. On March 3rd, women from across the world, some donning elaborate costumes, gathered by the Capitol. Altogether, the procession included some 5,000 women, as well as 24 parade floats and nine marching bands. Led by Inez Milholland on horseback, they set off down Pennsylvania Avenue for the Treasury Building. But the quarter million people that had gathered along the parade route had other ideas. Hearing the band strike up, the crowds on both sides of the avenue pushed into the roadway, wrote the New York Times. Looking down the avenue, the parader saw an almost solid mass of spectators. Drunken men crashed the parade route, hooting and jeering, and even assaulting the marchers. As women were tripped and shoved, the police proved unable or unwilling to assist them. When a drunken man spit on a marcher, one woman begged an officer for help. I asked the policeman, would he please not protect this woman? And he said, there would be nothing like this happen if you would stay at home. She was forced to take matters into her own, er, fists. I hit him and would have hit the policeman too if I could. Marchers struggled against the fray, using pickets, walking sticks, and even riding crops to forge ahead. But the chaos would continue for hours until the Secretary of War called an army cavalry from Fort Myers to clear the parade route. When the dust settled, over 100 people had been hospitalized. The pandemonium made the front pages and sparked congressional inquiries into the actions, or lack thereof, of the police that day. But despite the disarray, the 1913 Women's Suffrage Parade represented a kind of victory. It wasn't the costumes and fanfare that garnered the public's attention. It was the marchers' persistence, despite violence and harassment, to keep moving forward. For more DC history, check out our Boundary Stones playlist and subscribe to WETA PBS on YouTube.